Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Maya coming to you from the Wichita Mountains in Oklahoma. Today is January 1st, 2024, Monday. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope this is the year that you will seek after God's will, that you will follow after Him, that you will tell others about the only one who can save them. 2024, Happy New Year. Anyway, let's have a look at a few things going on these days. Seems like everywhere I look, I see Bible prophecy in the news. How the Jerusalem Post, Hamas, launches rocket barrage at central Israel as New Year begins. Hamas launching rockets at Israel. This war has been going on for, where are we at, a couple of months now? And it seems like all the politicians are yelling for Israel to stop. Yet, somehow it's okay that the Russia-Ukraine war has continued for well over a year now. Of course, we all know now that high-ranking politicians are getting kickbacks from these billions of dollars sent to Ukraine. Why these people aren't in prison yet, I have no idea. You know, we're told in Scripture that our battle's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I think we're seeing that all over the place. Um, it's amazing to me. I don't know about you guys, but I find myself feeling a little anger at so much injustice all over the world, left and right. You know, the atrocities in this war of Israel, Palestinians raping civilians, raping children, and yet somehow the world seems to be okay with it. Um, so many things we see left and right that shouldn't happen, but are. And people seem okay with it. And I just, I have issue with that. And it seems like the closer we're going to get to Christ's return, the worse it's going to get. I mean, Jesus told us this. He said, the last days will be a time like the world has never seen before or will ever see again. And I think we're feeling that in our spirits right now. This, this urging, this leading that we're feeling from within of something that's happening of what's going on out of cbs news israel moving thousands of troops out of gaza but expects prolonged fighting with hamas this fighting will keep going we'll probably see fighting from different fronts this year jordan syria lebanon it's coming it's it's in the bible so it will happen uh, they're finding out of the Jerusalem Post, IDF is finding Chinese weapons being used in Gaza. Chinese weapons. How did the Palestinians get their hands on Chinese weapons? Just curious. These kings of the East. Hmm. Amazing. What's, what's happening? Out of Breitbart, Vladimir Putin vows Russia will never back down in New Year's address. Never back down. Approaching its two-year anniversary, oh sorry, not a year, two years. Casualties continue to mount on both sides. Two years. And the world seems okay with this war. But they're condemning Israel for protecting their citizens, for protecting their borders. As here in America, our borders are just porous and terrorists. And those who hate America are just allowed to flood in with all the drugs, the cartels, those who wish to do us harm. Hmm. That actually makes our president a traitor. Ah, interesting. Lots of interesting things. What do you think about AI? Have you seen some of the things AI is doing? Things that these robots are saying? I expect AI development to explode this year for it to be at the forefront of I don't want to say a lot of problems but <laughs> I mean come on come on it's it's bizarre watching some of these things happen it's it's just like you know you read about um, the Antichrist and and this false prophet um, and so many things we see, you start to see glimpses of it in the news and stories that we read. When when the disciples asked Jesus, what will be the sign of your return? What will be the sign of the end of the world? And 
And in three Gospels, the first thing Jesus said was, watch that no man deceive you. We're seeing so much deception. AI can now make images of people who are dead and gone saying things they never said. And it looks like a real video. And it's like, oh, I didn't know he said that. Well, he really didn't. But AI can make it look like they did. You can see images of things that never happened, that never came to pass, that were never really an image, a picture of somebody. And yet, now people will see these things on the internet and go, oh, I didn't know the Pope was a downhill skier. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's bizarre. We're going to have to use a lot of discernment to not be deceived in the coming days. Because the deception will be everywhere. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Just because you see a picture of someone or a video of someone supposedly saying something doesn't mean they really did. That's bizarre because we've never had to really worry about that before, but now we do. We have to really ask the Holy Spirit for discernment, for guidance, for strength, to not be deceived, to not be misled, to know the truth from lies. I don't know about you guys, but man, the end of this last year was extremely busy for me. I mean, a lot of people who are in the retail industry, the hospitality industry, um, emergency services and other industries, December can be very busy. And, you know, my wife and I own a cafe. And yes, December can be quite busy. Um... A lot of Americans work less in the month of December while making more money. I, I, that's never been our story. I, we feel like we're working all the time. December is a month, I think, when stress is probably at its highest. You know, families trying to buy all the gifts for their children and all the shopping and the crowds, and it gets quite stressful. Uh, alcohol consumption spikes between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Uh, these numbers have been rising dramatically over the last five years. I saw a recent study by Alcohol.org that showed that 47% of men admitted to binge drinking on New Year's Eve. 47%, almost half, binge drinking. You know, blacking out, not remembering what they did that night. Um, I might have done that a time or two when I was in my 20s, but <laughs> thankfully wisdom does come with age most of the time. I think a lot of people are trying to capture this joy that seems to be eluding them, you know, trying to get out of depression. It's not working. Suicide is up. Drug overdoses are up. Uh, liver disease is up. Car wrecks, accidents, all on the rise. Life expectancy has gone down. You know, mental health professionals are giving out coping mechanisms to an ever more stressed society. You know, the Bible speaks of men crying out to the mountains, saying, cover us at the return of Christ. Trying to hide. We're hearing of billionaires building these bunkers underground. You know, if you don't know Christ, those bunkers aren't going to help you one bit at the end. Um, people are increasingly afraid. They're violent. They're anxious. They're agitated. They're prejudiced. They're angry. They're depressed. And they're trying to find answers in all the wrong places. Alcohol, drugs, sex, pornography. It's not working. You know what? Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Um, I think a lot of people are simply drinking from the wrong well. You know, in John 4, Jesus told that Samaritan woman about something called living water. Living water. He said, ordinary water leaves you thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I'll give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. John 4:14. 4, Jesus tells us he's the bread of life, John 6, 35. The bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. Will not hunger and will never thirst. That speaks of joy, peace, satisfaction, being content, 
something nothing in this world offers. It only comes from Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean we're going to live carefree while waiting to go to heaven. We're going to have obstacles. We, Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have already overcome the world. Um, we will have emotional highs and lows, peaks and valleys. It's part of life, living in this sinful world, in these physical human bodies. But we're seeing this all-out assault on freedom and prosperity. But the liberty that Christ gives us, the joy that Jesus brings us, cannot be stolen. It can't be taken, <laughs> thankfully. So, we need to pray like the Apostle Paul did in Ephesians 3, verse 16. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. You may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how, how deep, how wide, how long, how high His love is for us. Experience the love of Christ. You'll be made complete with the fullness of life and the power that comes only from God. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That is my prayer for this coming year. We need to trust in God. Faith lets us lose our fear and trust God for the impossible. You know, with God all things are possible. Hebrews 11, starting in verse 1, says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaks. Verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you diligently seeking the Lord this year? I hope and pray that you are. Faith isn't some kind of passive belief. Okay, It's, it's an active confidence that is within us. This, this unwavering trust in God's presence, in God's power, in God's promises. A conviction that God is faithful, that he can be trusted. We're, when we're surrounded by all this doubt and uncertainty and, 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 and deception, our faith guides us. It lights the way for our path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, the Bible tells us. Faith is the certainty of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. Believing without proof or evidence. You know, Jesus... When he was talking to Doubting Thomas, remember Doubting Thomas said, I'm not going to believe you guys saw the resurrected Savior until I touch his hands where the nails were, until I thrust my hand into his side. And then Jesus appeared unto him and said, Thomas, touch me here. Put your hand in my side. And Thomas said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. We're blessed, people. I didn't see the resurrected Christ, but I know it happened. I know it did. Without a doubt, nobody can make me doubt that. Nobody can take that away from me. Faith is the certainty of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. That's an encouraging invitation to trust in Jesus, to stay in trust. It anchors our soul. Hope rests in our loving and sovereign God who knows all things. You know, in a time of trial and challenges, our faith becomes a refuge. Don't be afraid. God is with you. It motivates us to step out in obedience, serving. Even if doing so seems impossible, it empowers us to face adversity with change, with, I mean, with courage, knowing that God is working all things together for our good, right? The Lord calls us to walk by faith, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7 to surrender our doubts, our fears to Him, to not live in deception, to not believe everything we see or hear. 
He wants us to believe his promises, even when circumstances seem to suggest otherwise. Trusting in him lets us see beyond the visible to the eternal. Keep your focus on the big picture, not on your circumstances for the moment. And in Christ, we find strength, we find peace, and the presence of our loving God guiding us every step of the way. So my hope and my prayer for you this year is that you will lean closer into God, that you'll draw nearer to Him, that you will seek after His face, that you'll seek after His kingdom, that you'll ask God, make me more like you and less like me. Like John the Baptist said, I must decrease and He must increase. I want to be more like Christ and less like Daryl. We have to submit ourselves and let the potter mold and make and shape us more and more into the image of his son Jesus. We have to let go of who we think we are and start being who God created us to be. If you haven't already, I'd like to ask you to make this the year that you read the entire Bible. Get online, find a good Bible app. I, I like you version. Find you a good app and read the Bible. Give the Lord 15 minutes of your day every day. And this time next year, you will have read the entire Bible. 15 minutes a day. You can, you can Structure your plan however you like with a little bit of Old Testament, a little bit of New, and maybe Psalm and Proverbs in there. You can do it where you start from beginning to end. That's a little more difficult. I've done that too, and it's you hit some spots where you're kind of like, why do I need to know who had this son and his son's name and that son's name? Why do I need to know all this? I would recommend breaking it up where you had a little bit of Old Testament, a little bit of New Testament, and maybe the Psalm and Proverbs in there too each day. Um, that was one of my favorite ways to read the entire Bible. But dig into it. Dive in. Learn more about the Lord we serve. Learn more about God's plan for you. Learn more about what's about to happen. Get to know the one we serve. Draw closer to him. That's my hope and my prayer for you this year. I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing. I'll see you again soon.